Could J.J. McCarthy be the starting quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings week one versus the New York Giants at MetLife Stadium? What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Vikings Now by Chat Sports. My name is Patrick Seatman, and we did get a new report saying from an NFL scout that he believes J.J. McCarthy will be starting in September. I'll show you that uh, here in a second, but also later on in the show. I'll admit it. I've been in the camp that J.J. should rest the entire year one. But I'm playing a little devil's advocate with myself. Why J.J. will succeed right away if he, if he uh, ends up being the starting quarterback. That's coming up here in just a second. Let's kick it to this NFL scout, Luke Easterling. And this is what he had to say. He said McCarthy is a true winner with a live arm and plus mobility. From the impression he's made at every stage of the draft process, I think McCarthy will be starting by September. And I got to admit, guys, I was wrong. Where Patrick was wrong was on the J.J. McCarthy take. I originally said there's no chance J.J. McCarthy starts week one. But I retract this statement. I think this battle is going to heat up during training camp. And if I had to call it right now, I'd probably say 75%, 80% Sam Darnold, and then 25 20%. J.J. McCarthy um, ends up starting. That's where I'll put it right now, but I was wrong. I originally said there was no chance that J.J. ends up starting, but hey, Randy Moss said it the other day. He said, you don't draft a guy at pick number 10 just to have him sit on the bench, and you know, Randy knows a lot more about this game of football than I do, so you know, I originally said there's no chance J.J. ends up starting, but you know, this report suggests otherwise, but I'll tell you what, if we get any more updates around this quarterback battle, I will make a video for you guys ASAP. I was making videos in the bathroom. I was making videos in my car during free agency when news is breaking left and right. So no matter where I'm at, the time of day, if we get another update around J.J. McCarthy, I will have a video for you guys ASAP. So hit that subscribe button today. But play-by-play -play announcer for Minnesota, Paul Allen. He was talking on his podcast early on this week and just saying um, his thoughts on where he thinks the Vikings quarterback situation stands right now. And he said this, I would make it prohibitively favored in that it would be Sam Darnold starting, Nick Mullins as the backup, and then J.J. McCarthy as the third quarterback. But this is an opportunity for McCarthy. Puncher's chance would be too strong. But Long is shot fashion to win the two jobs in training camp. And I don't necessarily know if it's going to happen. But I would make three QBs on the active roster prohibitively favored. And I also make this point. Paul Allen would not just say this. He is hearing this from somebody. Like, he is so tapped in with the Minnesota Vikings. If there's any sort of, you know, leak coming out around J.J. or this quarterback situation, he has it. So he wouldn't just come out and say that he thinks Sam Darnold and Nick Mullins are the favorites to be quarterback one and quarterback two. So some conflicting rumors here. But also, however, like teammates from or teammates of J.J. McCarthy on the Minnesota Vikings have raved about J.J. And, you know, I think when you're talking about like these younger quarterbacks in the NFL, like you are going to know after a couple practices if they're going to work out in the NFL. Like, I think it's so clear. Like, I'm sure the Packers, after a couple practices with Jordan Love, were like, yeah, we have another franchise quarterback after Rodgers. I'm sure the Bears, after, you know, a couple practices with K.O. Williams, are like, yeah, we have the guy there. Same thing with the Texans with C.J. Stroud. They knew they had the guy there, you know, ASAP. And, you know, it's actually T.J. Hawkinson, the latest teammate, to hop on a podcast and rave about the former Michigan quarterback. This is what he had to say. He's been grinding in the film room. He's been grinding in the classroom. He's a baller on the field, obviously. To have a guy, especially a rookie, when you come into a facility, into the league, you usually need to shut your mouth and go to work, and that's exactly what he did. But also, newest member of the Minnesota Vikings, uh, a Minnesotian, Blake Cashman, had this to say. He's 21 years old, but a great young man. He's a leader. He's eager to learn. A lot of young guys, sometimes they come in, be a little timid or shy, but he's walking around the locker room, big smile on his face, shaking hands, getting to know everybody. I didn't know much about his game before. I knew he was an outstanding quarterback. Winning fouled him at Michigan, but I didn't realize how much heat he can put on the ball. He's got a great long ball and even tight windows. Where it closes fast at the next level, he can zip the ball past a linebacker's safety's head and squeeze it in those tight windows. 
That's very promising to see. And I'll say this, guys, another where Patrick was wrong. If J.J. McCarthy dominates training camp and gives the team a better chance to win because the players will know and the coaches will know who is the better quarterback after training camp, he will start. I think it is incredibly more likely than I thought originally that J.J. is going to be the starting quarterback week one. I just thought due to his age and the Vikings timeline, they were going to you know, drag this process out and kind of have him work behind the scenes and you know, gear up to being the starter next season. But if he's ready to go and he's the best quarterback in that room, he will start week one, I guarantee it. But you guys pick a quarterback one for me. I'm sure this will get a lot of interaction in the chat. Type SD for Sam Darnold or type JJ for JJ McCarthy. I'm, I'm going to go no comment on this so far. I want, I want to see what you guys have to say. Pick a quarterback one for me. Let me know your thoughts down below. But I want to wrap up today's show talking about why J.J. McCarthy will succeed if he ends up being the starting quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings. Because I said originally, I don't think it's the smartest decision for him to be QB1. But I got four reasons why it will work out no matter what. The number one reason, the biggest reason, is the support system. We have seen quarterbacks come in the NFL. We can take our very own Sam Darnold, for example. Come in the NFL, drafted by the New York Jets, terrible organization, Terrible support system. He ended up flaring out. The Vikings are going to offer J.J. one of the best support systems in the NFL. Now, taking a look at the offensive weapons here. <coughs> Excuse me. Obviously, got Justin Jefferson. Know what he's about is he was actually rated the number one receiver, um, according to coaches, executives, uh, uh, this past week, which is pretty cool to see. But, you know, you do have a question mark around Jordan Addison, but that's a different conversation for a different day. You got Aaron Jones, I think one of the most underrated running backs in the entire NFL TJ Hawkinson, Josh Oliver, Robert Tunyon, you know, even if Hawk, you know, misses time up until Thanksgiving, like you'll still be able to, you know, suffice with him at the, uh, you, or you still will be able to be productive at the uh, tight end position. But he also said he could maybe return for week five against the New York Jets. Then also, you know, you're probably seeing this graphic offensive weapons. Why do you have a Christian Darisol on this? Well, Jim Harbaugh, one of my favorite coaches of all time, and actually, you know, JJ McCarthy's college coach. Said that offensive linemen are weapons too, and I think the Vikings have one of the best in the NFL in Darisaw. But also, Quazy talked about a support system before the draft even went down. He said, I think the last couple of years, obviously it's out there, the results of these quarterbacks that were drafted and different things like that. I think we look at those things and we obviously honor them and respect them. But we also look at the environment and are we setting the person up to succeed? So when we talk about these players, it's not just how good are they, it's how do we get the best versions of themselves if they come to the Minnesota Vikings. We set up plans before they walk in the building. Now, I absolutely love this from Quazy. I think this is showing self-awareness on the situation and just realizing it's a a two-way street. Like, yes, 80% of it is on the player. 80% of it is on the quarterback if he is going to, you know, succeed in the NFL. For that 20%, that's the support system. That's your coaching staff. That's the environment you are in. If they're getting the most out of you, that matters. And I don't think that's talked about enough. And that's why I actually agreed with Colin Cowherd. One of his best takes this offseason was, I believe the second best quarterback in this year's draft class is going to be whoever the hell the Minnesota Vikings select. And obviously it ended up being J.J. McCarthy. But a big reason why J.J. was taken in the first round is the intangibles. Um... He was, uh, you know, obviously just hearing him at the podium, um, hearing the way he handles himself and just, you know, obviously what his teammates said about him. We already showed you the guys that on that show. But intangibles matter as a quarterback. Like Brady has gone on Colin Cowherd's show and talked about how much that means to the locker room and that huddle to have a quarterback who the guys can rally around. And I think, you know, obviously quarterback wins are not the end-all, be-all when evaluating quarterbacks. But this man... You could count his losses on one hand since his freshman year of high school. If you say that doesn't matter, if you say that has nothing to do with him and just has more to do with the team around him, I understand that. But the fact that he has four losses is incredible. He was 26-3, and three, his freshman to junior year at Nazareth Academy, transferred to IMG his senior year, undefeated. Then as a starter at the University of Michigan, playing for the Wolverines, he was 27-1. and one. But another reason why I think J.J. is going to succeed, 
I think he's got one of the better play callers in the NFL. And, you know, watching the receiver documentary, and it was episode two after the Vikings lost to the Eagles and turnovers and um, – or mainly turnovers were the biggest issue why they were losing those games. Kevin O'Connell came in the locker room, and he was firing everybody up. He was MFing, you know, the whole team. And I loved that because I didn't know – that Kevin O'Connell had that side to him. I thought he was more of that, you know, obviously he still is that more, you know, young offensive play caller, super cool, calm, and collected, but he definitely got a fiery side to him. And listen, I'm all in on Kevin O'Connell as the Vikings head coach. Um, I think he's going to be great. I think he's going to be the head coach for the foreseeable future. And I understand people, you know, gave him a hard time last year, you know, saying all this about, you know, the play calling on third and short, fourth and short, short. I understand that. But what this man did with Josh Dobbs, Nick Mullins, and Jaron Hall, it should be talked about more, especially that Josh Dobbs-Falcons game where he was in the ear of Dobbs that entire game telling him, telling him his reads, everything he needs to do. It was a clinic put on by Kevin O'Connell. He got this team to go 7-10 and 10 with some of the worst quarterback play in the league and also with just a middle-of-the-pack defense. I think that speaks to, you know, how good KOC is. But also this, you know, if you're saying, why Brian Flores? What is Brian Flores going to have to do with J.J. McCarthy? I think it matters a defense or what a defense means to a young quarterback. And what I mean by this is, you know, instead of having your young quarterback be like, hey, our defense stinks. We got to have you go put up 30, 35 points a game to have us win. Brian Flores is going to tell J.J., get us to 21 points and we'll be all right. And it gets me this take. I think the Vikings defense is going to be top 10 this season. The Vikings two years ago with Ed Donatel had the worst defense in the league statistically by far. It was terrible. Somehow that team won 13 games. Obviously a lot of that was, you know, turnover luck and, you know, finishing out a lot of these close games at the end. But I think the Vikings are going to have a top 10 defense, no doubt about it. Main reason why, you got dogs on that side of the field. Like you have 10 players who maybe elite defenders is a little zealous for these guys, but... Man, you got some playmakers. You got Grenard, Van Ginkle, you know, holding down the edge department with Dallas Turner, the draft pick. You added another great linebacker next to Ivan Pace and Blake Cashman playing for his hometown team. He's going to be motivated. You got the three-headed monster, Josh Metellus, Cam Bynum, Harrison Smith. Then even the cornerback room, still a big question mark, but Byron Murphy's a still good football player. Hopefully you get a jump from Makai Blackman or, um, you know, a Caleb Evans or maybe Shaq Griffin gets back to – you know, it was old days there, but hey, man, the Vikings defense, they got a lot of talent there. They got a great defensive coordinator. I think no doubt it's going to be top 10 in the league. But speaking about J.J. McCarthy, we'll close today's show with this. Would you start J.J. McCarthy week one? Let's say you're Kevin O'Connell. You know, you, you get a random phone call one day. It's crazy on the phone being like, hey, I have no idea what to do. What would you do? Would you start J.J. McCarthy week one? Give me a Y for yes or an N for no down in the comment section. As always, guys, give me a follow on Twitter. That's a handle right there, at Pat Seeps. If you guys do so, I'll give you guys a follow back. But uh, really appreciate everybody tuning in. Still in the dog days of the offseason, but cannot wait for training camp to get underway. Um, so, yeah, shout out to you guys. And as always, Skull Vikes.